Hi guys, good afternoon and welcome to Mutual Fund Corner. I'm Pavitra Parekh. With me is Sonal Bhutra and the RBI, like we all know, has sp uh, sprung a surprise today and paused on rates. This, however, has been followed by rather hawkish comments, right, that came through. So it was quite mixed on that front. The governor has made it absolutely clear that this policy can be characterized as a pause, but not a pivot, and also adding that the decision to pause is only for this meeting. He also said that the MPC will not hesitate to take further action in the future if the need be. So, Sonal, for now, we have a pause after an effective hike of 290 basis points, you know, since May of last year. So how should you look at debt investing at a time like this? There have also been those big amendments to the tax rules. A good time to be discussing debt. Oh, it should be, right? And uh, we've, as you said, we've seen so much happening just in this category. You yeah. spoke about the flows going higher in this particular segment as well. So let's get our guest today. Uh, let's welcome Sandeep Bagla, the Chief Executive Officer at Trust Mutual Funds, to discuss all about debt funds. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Bagla, for joining us. And that really is the first question. How do you look at debt funds after the RBI rate decision today? Uh, first of all, thank you, Sonal. Thank you, Pavitra, for having me on the show. Uh, of course, uh, I did not know that RBI is going to take a pause uh, before the show was um, announced. And my view was very similar uh, to my view now, which was that basically when interest rates go down and they go down when inflation comes down and uh, the bond markets, the bond prices appreciate, they add capital gains to your portfolio yield. So I think that is going to happen any which way uh, because RBI has hiked up rates so many times. And even globally in the US, uh, rates have gone up. So inflation will come down. And if it comes down, then there's bound to be better returns from debt market strategy. Now, the policy came as a pleasant surprise because uh, there was no really indication that... Uh, RBI is likely to pause and uh, introspect as to the effects of what uh, has happened in the market and uh, is likely to impact uh, the the macros, macro macroeconomic scenario uh, going forward. So while of course the 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 language is non-committal in terms of future, uh, I think that it's a it's a great time to invest in debt. Uh, one of the parameters which I use is expected inflation and uh, the nominal rate. So nominal rate minus the expected inflation gives you what I think is the real rate. And if the real rate is about 2.5% and you expect inflation to go down, I think it's a very, very good combination uh, for investing in fixed income, long maturity bonds. So currently we have inflation, RBI is expecting 52 the market is expecting somewhere around 4.5 to 4.75. And you have the nominal rate at about 720, annualized at 735. So you have a huge gap and we are expecting inflation to come down. So we could see a rally over the year. And uh, so this definitely it's a good time to invest. And what RBI has said today is a cherry on the cake. Okay, yes, definitely came as a surprise to all of us, you know, I, I don't think most people expected a pause today from the RBI. But Mr. Bagla, you know, a key risk associated with debt investing anyway is the <clears throat> entire interest rate risk, right? Could you just explain this for our viewers and how big a risk do you think it is now in the context of what we've seen from the RBI? Uh, do you think this kind of pause that they put through is something that's likely to continue and it's going to be an extended pause? And in that context, uh, take us through how you look at this entire interest rate risk now. So first, let's take a, uh, let's take a look at the, what is interest rate risk. It's not very really intuitive because people are used to investing in fixed deposits where the interest rates are, uh, the coupon rate is fixed uh, for the tenure of the bond, uh, for the tenure of the deposit. Now, unlike a deposit, a bond is tradable. So for example, uh, there are some, let's say we have a 10-year bond and uh, the interest rates I bought it at was 8%. Now, one basic rule is that if interest rates go down, bond prices go up. And when interest rates go up, bond prices come down. So let's assume interest rates fall by 100 basis points over a period of next one year. And the interest rate at which I bought was 8%. And after one year, the interest rates are at 7%. So I am getting 8% as my coupon rate and 1% Fall in interest rates leads to a change in bond price. The second rule that we have to remember is 
the longer the maturity of the bond, the higher is the percentage rise in bonds prices given uh, a certain percentage fall in yields. So if the yields fall by 1% and the bond is 10 years old, long, then you will have 7% capital gains approximately. So you were getting 8% coupon plus 7% capital gains. So return could be anywhere between 13, 14, 15%. So that is the impact of interest rate risk. However, one should be careful because it works the other way around also. Uh, if you are getting 8% coupon and interest rates rise to 9%, you will get a 7% fall in prices, which will reduce your 9%, 8% carry to by 7% and you will get only 1% return. So interest rate risk is very simply put, if, if interest rates go down, bond prices go up, the longer the maturity, the higher the percentage rise in the price of the bonds for a given change in yields. And typically yields tend to fall when inflationary outlook is good. So if expected inflation is likely to come down, you believe that uh, bond prices should do better. These three things are absolutely so important, right? Before anyone invests in debt funds, especially that inverse relationship between yields and uh, the price of a bond as well. Uh, Mr. Bagla, you know what happened in the last week of March was debt funds seeing massive inflows. Uh, this is in order to take the advantage of indexation benefit before the new rules kick in uh, from April 1st. How do you see flows looking now? Will you, do you think there'll be a big draw from this level, uh, especially in the debt funds that I'm talking about? So there have been a couple of uh, changes which have slightly longer term ramifications. Uh, and one of them was basically removing the tax indexation benefit given to debt funds. The second was uh, the, again, the tax uh, benefit given to what were called the market linked debentures was also removed. Now for an investor uh, to combine liquidity, safety, and returns. You don't have too many options. If one were to invest in fixed deposits, you know, it's like a passive, uh, no action, no, no dynamic uh, movement of interest rates is going to affect it. And you're, you're wedded to that coupon for the life of the fixed deposit. However, mutual funds offer you the potential of active management where the fund manager can increase duration when it feels that interest rates are going to come down and that can lead to higher returns. Unfortunately, over the last maybe five, seven years, interest rates have been extremely volatile. The interest rate cycles have become shorter and shorter, uh, which has led to you know fund managers and distributors pushing passive products to uh, investors where they get the comfort of a particular of kind of a fixed return they would get at the end of the tenure. But unfortunately, when these, this, this works very well when interest rates are going up because it protects the downside and gives you a committed return kind of. But when interest rates are coming down, the active funds or the long maturity funds uh, will outperform um, inflation, uh, probably fixed deposits, and the uh, passively managed funds uh, by a mile, by a huge margin. <clears throat> so there was, if you remember in 2000 to 2004, when interest rates were coming down by one and a half percent every year, and the returns I think from income funds were about 14 to 16 percent per year for, for four years in, in continuum. However, that is not expected. Interest rate cycles have become shallow, and if inflation goes down, uh, then uh, typically uh, interest rates are cut. And since our, most of the regulators are so active, uh, interest rates tend to trend in a, trade in a range. And which is why uh, you know, people have not really understood the benefits of long-term investing in debt. Okay, that is good to put on the table and hopefully, you know, through shows like this, people will realize that as well. But, you know, Mr. Bagla, this new money that we were just talking about, which is sort of rushed into this category in the last week of March, it was, of course, you know, just to get in before that April 1st deadline. Do you think this will stay locked in for the next three years? Because this was basically anyone who's sitting on the sidelines who had plans to get into debt, they just sort of advanced their plans, right? See, I think it would be safe to assume that majority of it would stay uh, okay. invested. 
Now, this was basically a free option given to investors that even though I don't know, I don't have uh, you know, visibility on my cash flows, I can still invest in a debt fund. And if I require the money, I always have the option to withdraw it. But I would say 60-70% of it should be remain invested in uh, for a period of uh, uh, three to four years. And there's a tax rules change again. So I, I think, but you know, in, in overall scheme of things, not much money has changed hands. So you know, in a debt portfolio of let's say fixed income portfolio of mutual funds of 14 lakh crores, uh, about 40,000 crores has sort of moved. Uh, I would make this an estimate. And about 40,000 crores would have moved into uh, these uh, various kinds of debt schemes. So that is not really all that much in a larger scheme of things. Hmm. Okay. So, you know, while we are talking about all the indexation benefit taken away, it now being treated at par at the marginal rate as far as tax is concerned for debt funds. Of course, there still would be a case for holding debt funds, right, in one's portfolio in order to diversify and uh, take advantage of all the yields that these uh, funds provide as well. What, according to you, is the case here and what kind of ideal mix do you expect? So, see, I'll give you a sort of a statistic. Uh, we were looking at the Crystal Bond Fund Index, uh, Composite Bond Fund Index. And over the last 10 years, that index has given a return of about 8.75% uh, when I looked at it about a month back. Maybe it's close to 8.75 now. And, uh, however, the returns are not in a straight line. So, at one year, it was minus 1%. In another year, it was plus 18%. So the overall was 8.75%, which is similar to, you know, what was happening in equities also. So equities also, you know, investors have learned uh, uh, that, you know, returns are not straight line. So they have understood the volatility and they have understood the return profile. Now, if you recall, there used to be a scheme in the 60s and 70s and maybe 80s as well, where the NAV uh, was not, where the price of repurchase and purchase was announced without the NAV, which had no link to NAV. And there were tax benefits and there were capital gains and investors were lulled into a cocoon <laughs> of safety and tax benefits. However, when the gap became too large to handle, the government discontinued that scheme. The scheme was wound up and investors started taking the market risk. They started investing in open equity funds and they have remained invested for the last 30 years and they have gained from them they have prospered from the benefits of uh, live markets dynamic markets and open-ended equity funds which manage funds dynamically i think this could be that moment for uh, debt funds also till now you had the comfort of tax benefits mm. and perhaps an implicit interest rate which was keeping you calm however suboptimal it was but now you have to understand, okay, what is debt? What are the main factors which drive it? Uh, should I invest in an active fund or passive fund? Both are good. But will, so probably in terms of fund allocation, I think people should have something in FD, some allocation in open-ended funds, some allocations perhaps could be have to have in passive funds also. Uh, but yeah, that makes a lot of sense to, you know, uh, divide your money and do sort of diversify within, uh, you know, what you can do with debt investing as well. Uh, Mr. Bagla, I request you to stay on. We're going to take a quick break and come back. And then I want to actually ask you about some of the individual categories within debt funds that you could look at and your call on them as well. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Mutual Fund Corner. Still have with us Sandeep Bagla. We are talking all about debt funds, this action from the RBI, what the impact could be, and a lot more about other categories as well. Uh, Mr. Bagla, you know, in the last week of March, we saw corporate bond and target maturity funds drawing the biggest amount of money. Corporate bonds alone got over 7,700 crore rupees in terms of an inflow. What are your thoughts on both of these categories? Okay, so target maturity funds uh, are passive funds. And uh, they help you in sort of uh, cash flow management in the sense that if you have a requirement for a certain period where you want your money back and you want to keep it away, 
uh, you could either put it in FDs or you could buy a bond or you could put it in target maturity fund. Now, why target maturity funds became popular was because uh, they were investing in, let's say, government securities and you were getting the tax benefit. As opposed to if you were buying the same government bond directly in your DMAT account, you would not get the tax benefit. So I think th their attractiveness of the target maturity funds has somewhat reduced. Corporate bond funds, on the other hand, uh, have 80% uh, exposure to the corporate bonds which have rating of very high quality, double A plus or above. So it's double A plus or triple A. And uh, they are open-ended funds. So there's no restriction on either the maturity or uh, on, on, on the type of uh, duration calls that the fund manager can take. The, the risk is low in the sense that quality of the corporate portfolio is very high. And it can really give you a good flavor of the interest rate movements and benefit from capital gains uh, from time to time. So if, you, if one stays invested uh, in corporate bond funds, I think it will be a very good outcome uh, in the future uh, going forward. So uh, the two are quite different and I think the corporate bond funds are uh, superior at this point of time. Okay, corporate bond funds over the target maturity category. Uh, Mr. Bagla, what other categories would you look at? Because, you know, as soon as this tax amendment came through and uh, that entire indexation benefit was taken away, we were talking about alternatives. A lot of people suggested, you know, balanced advantage funds, hybrid funds. Do you think these are good options as well now? No, oh, they are good options. Uh, but when I last checked, I think that the expense ratios were slightly higher than if you were to replicate uh, the same funds by investing in a debt fund separately and investing in an equity fund separately. So, for example, let's say you have a balanced fund where 65% is in equities and 35% is in debt. So, you are getting equity benefit, uh, taxation benefit. However, if you put, uh, you know, 65% direct equities and 35% in debt, probably your overall cost will be better. So hybrid funds have done well uh, over a period. Uh, but I, I feel that, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's some room for improvement in fund management or performance, uh, given the dynamic nature of the markets and the various combinations of, the, of hybrid funds. Hmm. So, you know, um, when we are talking about income funds, equity funds, and the larger issue still remains that there is no instrument available to a retail investor now that can really help you beat rising inflation with an indexation benefit that has been taken away from debt funds right now. Uh, can you uh, talk to us about any fund, any suggestion you can think of to put in place which would help long-term savings for investors? So, you know, most investors actually invest for the returns. Uh, tax is an added element or uh, which can help you decide whether this instrument or that. So I think just like I was explaining in the previous uh, half of the show that a crystal composite bond index has given a return of between 8.5 to 8.75. Now, if you were to look at the long-term uh, inflation, um, um, CPI inflation uh, trajectory in India, uh, I think we would be close to, I think, between, anywhere between 5 to 6%. And even after taking expenses out, if investors were to make somewhere close to 8% uh, from uh, open-ended, uh, pure debt uh, fund, which has a maturity of, let's say, anywhere between 5 to 7 years, and you hold it for 2 to 3 years, I think over interest rate cycles, while your returns would fluctuate, uh, but overall, you would be able to beat inflation uh, comfortably. At least historically, for the last 10, 15 years, that has been the experience. And uh, I don't see any reason why in the future, unless we face a period of you know, extreme financial repression where interest rates are forced to be down for some period, uh, which below inflation, uh, where, where everybody suffers. Uh, but I think those days are over uh, and those kind of strategies have their own problems. So I think being in an income fund or let's say a long duration fund or a corporate bond fund or a short term fund, banking PSU fund or any combination of these funds 
would be extremely good uh, in terms of uh, beating inflation comfortably. Whatever liquidity requirements one may have, one could invest in you know, something like liquid funds or money market funds. There's a plethora of funds which have maturity of up to one year and their uh, duration risk and interest rate risk is very, very low. So for, uh, for liquidity management, you could use funds up to one year. And for beating inflation, you should have uh, you know, a range of funds, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, and uh, with the advice of a mutual fund distributor, uh, you could form a very, very uh, clean portfolio, uh, which will give you returns as well as uh, safety, as well as uh, you know, uh, extreme, uh, extremely good liquidity. Mm, yeah. All right, Mr. Bagla, you've given us a full set of different options that we can look at as well as a lot of these categories and taken us through, you know, what will really work for what kind of investors. So thank you very much for joining us and taking us through this in-depth class on looking at debt investing. But we will wind down on that note. Thank you all for tuning in. There's lots more coming up on the other side.